primary caretaker. We are moms who are waiting to have children and trying our best to see the struggle through the eyes of God. We are moms who are learning the challenges of a blended family. We are moms in the workplace who are trying our best to balance competing expectations and demands. We are moms with adult children who are leaving our homes to pursue their own dreams. For packing lunches late at night, for cleaning out their backpacks, then filling them again, for offering gentle guidance to your own grown children, for becoming taxi drivers and appointment schedulers, for making sure the right baby doll is in their arms before they go to sleep, for helping them pay back their student loans, for cleaning and sterilizing and cooking, for doing their laundry and his laundry and our laundry, for praying and loving and forgiving and falling down and rising to your feet again. For the mom who is overworked and exhausted, for the mom who seems to spend a million hours on a million little things, for the mom who pours Jesus into her family as best she can. And God himself not only celebrates what you do, but rejoices over the uniqueness of who you are. You are seen and you are loved without limits. Welcome to Mother's Day. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, our 10 o'clock worshiping experience where we're doing our best to make disciples by reaching out, loving, caring, sharing, and inspiring spiritual and personal growth. It is so good to see all of you, to have all of you with us on today. Those of you joining us online, God bless you. Thank you for being with us as well. And let me go ahead and reiterate what we just saw and say Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms and grandmoms and persons who have stepped into the role of mom in so many lives. Thank you so much for your contributions. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for your willingness and your ability to love as greatly as God has gifted you. Happy, happy Mother's Day. Uh, we do have a few announcements to make, my friends, and then we will move on with our worshiping experience for today. Uh, please do not forget the communication uh, cards in the chair backs in front of you. Fill one of those out. Place it in the collection plate as it comes by during this worshiping experience. And for those of you joining us online, we do have virtual communication cards on our website. And if you're with us uh, on Facebook, uh, just put something in the comment section to let us know that you're with us on today. Always check your e-blasts. Uh, always read your newsletters. Follow us on social media. There's a lot that is going on. And let me say this about social media. Uh, if you're following us on social media and you see something that you like, let us know. Hit the heart. Click the like. Let us know that you like it. If you see something on social media and you're not sure that you like it, like it anyway. Just trust me. It's good stuff. Just trust me. Like it anyway. <laughs> let us know that you are watching and that you are with us as we're doing our best to share the message of Christ and the work of this church with as many as we possibly can. All right, there, um, the book study, I'm sorry, the Bible study, the book of Acts, we're going to take a, a, a break from an in-class study this week, but there is a handout for this week's lesson. For those of you who are, who are able to do so today, the handout is on the table in the narthex. Pick one up and, and read it. Uh, those of you online, there, that same handout will be provided for you virtually very soon. So go ahead and, and look at the lesson because it will prepare you for next week because next week we close Acts out. Next week we are done. So next week, not this week, but next week, we'll be gathering on Tuesday at 6 o'clock as well as on Wednesday at noon. And we're going to have a wonderful time as we end this Bible study for this season. Um, one of the reasons why we will not be meeting this week is because I will be attending a preacher's conference this week. We don't talk about this often, but uh, one of the things that is strongly encouraged for ordained ministers 
is that we continue with our education. It's called continuing education credit. And we do this by attending conferences, workshops, reading books and things along that line. And yes, it's time for me to get some continuing education <laughs> credit. So I'll be doing that on this week. And again, we'll finish up the Bible study on the following week. Do not forget that Saturday, the time change is 2 o'clock now, but Saturday at 2 o'clock, uh, uh, Kevin Bugarelli will be ordained as a minister of word and sacrament at Pathway Church in Burleson, Texas. Kevin has been with us uh, during his licensed preacher phase quite a bit. He's preached here quite often. He's helped with communion. He's even assisted in other areas. So we want to at least be able to be there to support him on his great day. He graduated this past Friday from uh, Bright Divinity School, Texas Christian University. So we are very proud of him, and we hope that, of course, those of you who can will be there on next Saturday, the 20th. Next Sunday, 21st is a big day. During worship, we will commission our care ministers during the worship experience on next Sunday. And then Sunday evening, next Sunday evening at 5 o'clock, Fitz Mobilaire will do his first sermon here at the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. So we're excited for Fitz on next Sunday. So if you're able to be here Sunday afternoon, we hope that you will be here to support, uh, to support Fitz. All right, that's all that I have. Oh, 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 don't forget, um, we are having uh, an, an um, arts uh, uh, event in September. Now, we are looking for artists. Those of you who would like to participate, please contact Ginger Williams and let her know that you'd like to be a part of this amazing event. We got a lot of details that surround this. Those will come forth as we get closer to the time. All right, now I would like to bring up the Reverend Leanne Kerner, and she has any announcements for our youth, children, and families. Good morning. Just a reminder, the youth and children are still doing the envelope fundraiser. As you exit the sanctuary, you will see a board filled with envelopes. Please take one of those if you would like to give to our camping ministry fundraiser. Um, whatever number is on the envelope, you put that amount of money in the envelope to give. Those can be dropped in the offering plate or given to me. Um, we are taking a break from Sunday nights, and there is no youth group tonight, so everyone can go and enjoy Mother's Day. On Wednesday, the women will gather for lunch at SoCo, which is just down the street. If you would like to go to that, please let me know to make sure our reservation will cover that. And then next Sunday, there will be a baby shower for Kelly and Justin in Shelton Hall, Come and Go Following Worship. They are not registered, but they have asked for diapers or books to fill the baby's library. So we hope you join us for that. And then finally, we are nearing the t-shirt cutoff for Vacation Bible School. So if you have someone planning to attend Vacation Bible School, they need to register for it by the 22nd of this month to ensure a t-shirt. And they're really pretty, so you really want one. Thank you, Leanne. <clears throat> um, Kelly, Justin, she scared me just for a moment. She was talking about the baby shower, and she said, you all were looking for books. Yes, bring books for the baby's room, but no parenting books. They don't work. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. None of them work. <laughs> all of them are broken, so don't waste your money. <laughs> Oh, parenting books. All right. <laughs> All right, we do have some things to share about our members. Of course, we got birthdays this week. Happy birthday to uh, Jack Lutz. Happy birthday to Kay Wine. And happy birthday this week to Carol Shinoda. Am I right, Carol? Yes. Happy birthday to Carol Shinoda this week as well. And one last thing that I wanted to share with you all. Um, we have a new officer who is working with us. His name is Fernando De Luna. And if you've not had a chance to meet him, I would encourage you, before you leave uh, the church on today, to go up and shake his hand and let him know how happy 
we are to have him with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, now I'm done for a moment. Stand up. Uh, it's that time that we do what we can to show our honor and service to the Lord. And as we go into service, let us keep on praising and praising and praising God. For that we say amen. We are so, so blessed, even though sometimes we just don't know it, to being able to lift our hands, to be able to use our voices, to be able to meet and greet one another. And also at this time, you know, being able to thank those that, that brought us up, especially our mothers, dear Lord. We thank you for them. We thank you for them bringing us up, them teaching us, them allowing us to learn to be good Christians and just good people to one another. 
We thank you for them now and forever. But as we go through this service, dear Lord, let us be reminded of who we are and what we are as Christians. Either if it's through word, through song, through prayer, through scripture, let it find a way into our hearts so that we may also be able to put it into the hearts of those beyond the walls of this place. For we are the church, dear Lord. It's your name that we pray forever and evermore. Amen. Amen. My friends, may you have hope in Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you. Now please share the hope of Christ with those close to you.
shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Psalms, <clears throat> chapter 115. Listen for the word of God. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory, because of your love and faithfulness. Why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold, made by human hands. They have mouths, but cannot speak, eyes, but cannot see. They have ears, but cannot hear, noses, but cannot smell. They have hands, but cannot feel, feet, but cannot walk. Nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. All you Israelites, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord small and great alike. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It is we who extol the Lord, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Doris. And to our praise team and all of you, for being with us on today, this Mother's Day. Our second text for today, ah, wait a minute, before I do that, let me explain something that some of you all may not uh, 
quite be aware of. Um, on, on this Sunday, on today, um, there seems to be a lot more handsomeness coming from this area right here because my wife and I and our daughter brought a very good looking person to come to worship with us on today. <laughs> For those of you who may not know, this is our son. This is Jonathan. Jonathan is a entering senior at the University of Tulsa in Oklahoma, and he is here for the summer to make sure that we have no food, but we're glad to have you, son. <laughs> we love this young man, and we're very, very proud of him and all of our college students who have come home for the summer. All right, uh, the second text, my friends, comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, just verses 13 through 15, a very familiar passage. But before we read, Bible check. Yes, 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 yes. We do encourage you to bring your Bibles when you come to the house of the Lord. Uh, and then for those of you at home, to, of course, to use your Bibles as well, even though we do provide the scripture, if something strikes you there where you need to make a note, well, you got your Bible to use in that regard. Amen? All right. Luke 24, beginning at verse 13. Please, my friends, listen and read along. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your blessings, your grace, your mercy, all that you continue to do for us and with us. And we thank you for what we've witnessed, knowing that you're using all of these things to prepare us to hear a word from you. So right now, make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more. And fix us by clearing our minds and opening our hearts and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you. And upon hearing from you, we want to leave this place better than the way we arrived. Yes, Lord, we just want to be better than the way we were before. In your name, we ask it all. Amen and amen. If you would, please turn to a neighbor, look at them good, and repeat after me. And if you're by yourself, just look at me. Sorry, if you're by yourself, just look at me. And say, friend, today's sermon is called Loving the Despised One. I've shared this with you before, and I thought it would be a good Sunday to share this with you. Again, as a child, um, my parents made it their business to make sure that my brother and I got a chance to go to the State Fair of Texas every year. And they also let us ride a bunch of disturbing stuff, things that probably would have got them in trouble in this day and age, but everything was fine back then. A lot of disturbing things. One in particular, we got a chance to go into what was called a haunted house. Now, the haunted house had people that would wear white clothes, shirts, pants, so that they could project images of monsters on them. And then they could reach out and grab you as you walked through. Oh, we loved it. We were scared to death, but we loved it. And my parents sandwiched us in between. My father was in front, my brother and I behind him, mama was behind us. On this particular occasion, there was another group of kids that came in with us. They were behind us, way, way behind us. And they were scared to death. I could hear them screaming and crying. And the screaming and the crying got louder and louder and louder. Then I turned around, and these kids were hanging on to my mama. <laughs> I may share a Snickers with you, 
I may share a soda with you. I don't share mama. These kids were hanging on to mama, and mama was holding on to them, and they were crying, and they were getting tears and snot and all this stuff on my mama. And I'm, I'm looking back, and I'm not scared anymore. I'm hot. I'm upset. So we finally, we get out. And these kids get out, and they take off. Well, <laughs> now I got to talk to mama about it. About this, Mama, I can't believe you had those kids hanging on you like that. We don't know them. They don't look like us. They don't act like us. I can't believe you did that. Mama looked at me. The first thing she said was, watch your tone. First thing. And then she said, son, you had your father. If you were afraid, you had your father. He was there. But these children had no one. And they wanted to be comforted. They needed to be comforted. And I was there for them to do the best that I could. Well, I still didn't like it. Still didn't like it, but that's what she explained I mean, this was not the first time. <laughs> this is not the first time mama had to have a conversation like this with me. It's not the first time. But the first time that I can actually remember was when we were getting ready to move from Cleveland, Tennessee to Dallas, Texas. For those of you who may not be aware, my father was also a minister. And he took a pastorate in Dallas, which caused us to move from Tennessee to Dallas when I was around seven or eight years old. And my mother decided to throw a going away party for me and my brother in the neighborhood. There were a group of kids in the neighborhood. For today, we will call them the Baxters. Now, uh, <laughs> no one in our neighborhood was rich. Nobody was incredibly Wealthy, We all had struggles, but it appeared that the Baxter family had a few more struggles than, than the other families in the neighborhood. And their children, we didn't like them. They didn't like us. Matter of fact, all of our friends in the neighborhood, nobody liked the Baxter kids. So when it came time for this going away party, Mama said, who have you invited? I named everyone we invited except them. And Mama never made me invite the Baxters. But she would just simply say things uh, uh, along the line, uh, it would be good because you boys are so fortunate that you would invite our next door neighbors to your party. She would say things like, um, if someone I knew was throwing a party, I would hope that they would invite me. None of that worked. Nope. Not going to invite the Baxters. <laughs> the day of the party, the day of the party, she came back to me and she said, I really think you should consider inviting them. You're having a party next door, next door to them, and all of the kids in the neighborhood are going to be at this party. It's going to be at this party. None of you have ever tried to be friends with them, but this is a great opportunity for you. If the shoe was on the other foot, how would you feel? I said, fine. I'd feel fine. Went on about my business. Okay? About 15 minutes before the party. <sighs> I went next door. Knocked on the door. And I said, okay, well, it's late. Y'all probably got stuff to do. 
but me and my brother are having a party next door. If you want to come, you can come, but if you got stuff to do, don't worry about it. We'll be okay. <laughs> I went home. All the kids from the neighborhood came over, including the Baxters. They came too. And guess what? We had a ball. All of us. I learned things about them that I didn't know. They learned things about all of us that they didn't know. And after my brother and I moved away from that neighborhood, see, these are some of my childhood buddies that I still have right now. They all remain friends. They all remain friends. You know, most definitions of the word Emmaus is translated as hot springs or hot baths. But there's another definition for the word Emmaus that has more so to do with the people who lived in Emmaus. And that definition or that translation is despised ones. Despised ones or despised people. Probably my favorite TV show of all time, drama series that is, is Lost. Oh, I loved. <laughs> I loved Lost. Never missed it. Matter of fact, before streaming services and all these things, I'm someplace in our house somewhere, I got the whole set of DVDs for the whole, all six seasons of Lost. Folks on flight Oceanic 815, they mysteriously crash on an island and they quickly become their own community. Those who survive become their own community. But it's not too long that they learn that they're not the only ones on the island. There's some more folks there, some folks who were there before they got there. And the folks, from, the folks from Oceanic Flight 815, they look at the people who were there before them, and they call them others. Others. Why? Because they aren't with us? Because we don't know them? Because they don't look like us, because they don't act like us, call them others. What makes a group of people become the despised people? It could be the negative actions, could be that the negative actions of a few have been projected upon the whole group. I mean, you got one teenage preacher who's not humble, who's too loud, too flashy, too animated, <laughs> too much, just too much. And then we begin to think that all teenage preachers have to be like this teenage preacher. As I continue to watch the show Lost, it dawned on me that everyone is probably an other to someone. It dawned on me that everyone is probably an other to someone else. And guess what else? Probably everyone worshiping with us today has been labeled despised by another person, by another group. <laughs> and who knows what the reasons may be? Maybe because you're bald, you've been called despised, you're a high school dropout, you've been divorced. Maybe it's because you only chew on the right side of your mouth. I don't know, maybe because you like plaid jackets, 
Ah, um, what? Uh, you prefer basketball to golf? Uh, you prefer P.F. Chang's to Maggiano? I, I don't know. You're called the spy. Maybe it's because you're PCUSA or you're Methodist or you're Baptist or you're Pentecostal or Cumberland. Maybe you're called despised because you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Is that not what Jesus said? The world is going to hate you because the world hates me? You know, one of the biggest reasons why we, yeah, why we label folks despised ones or, or whatever is because we don't understand them. Ah, that's not right. Well, it's not accurate. It's because we don't want to understand them. That's accurate. Because we don't like how they make us feel, which is uncomfortable. Hello, somebody. Uncomfortable. Really? Uncomfortable. How much of Jesus' time was spent among the despised ones? Do you know? Was it most of it? Perhaps it was all of it. Look at the 12 disciples. I mean, first of all, none of them came from church. Uh-oh. <laughs> huh. Yeah, yeah. None of them came from the temple. None of them did. And according to Judaic law, if you wanted to be an apprentice, if you will, to a rabbi, it was your responsibility to find a rabbi and ask, can I be your disciple? But Jesus reversed it. And instead of somebody asking if they could follow him, he asked them, come follow me. And he didn't start at the church. He didn't start there. He didn't begin there. How much of time, how much of Jesus' time was spent among the despised, the perceived despised people? And it's interesting because many times those whom we consider to be despised that make us uncomfortable, they're not evil folks. They're not evil people. It just ain't us. It's just not us. And if we're going to do any kind of evangelism or any type of program to attract folks, unfortunately, we would rather it be folks we like and the folks that we really want to have here. I remember there was not too long ago that every church was trying to get a professional athlete. Oh, yeah, to be a member of their church to help with the building fund. I'll leave that one alone. But nevertheless, that seems to be the goal. We go after folks that we like or folks that we would rather have here. And all of you who have been attending the Acts Bible study, you have learned that what the book of Acts says is that folks don't join the church. The Lord adds them to a church. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Parent, that means the Baxters could be added to the church. The Lord adds people to the church. People who don't worship like we do, who don't dress like we do, who, who don't eat what we eat, who don't have the educational attainment or opportunities that we have. The Lord will add folk to the church who don't look like us. They may be Christians as we claim to be. But because they're not like us, we still see them as despised ones. We still treat them as despised ones. Y'all, I can't recall a time in Scripture when Jesus was comfortable. I 
Not a single time when Jesus was actually comfortable. He would, he would try to find a solitary place, and then crowds would come and mess that up. They disturb his, his, his rest and his time. He would teach on the scriptures, <laughs> and folks would try to kill him. I don't think that's comfortable. Mm. He'd even eat at people's houses and be accused of associating with the despised people. Even in death, he couldn't rest. But first, Peter says that Jesus died and went to hell and preached to the souls of antiquity. When was Jesus comfortable? When was he comfortable? So if you don't get anything else today, get this, please. If you're going to serve the Lord, get used to being uncomfortable. If you're going to serve the Lord, get used to seeing the despised ones as sisters and brothers. Today is Mother's Day. I don't have the vocabulary to express how much I miss my mama. I wish I could. But I know some of you know exactly what I'm dealing with and what I'm feeling and what this day brings when mama is gone. I find myself sometimes even thinking about the day when I will see her again. I'm not trying to hurry and get there, y'all, but I think about that day when I will see mama again, because mama taught me a lot about this life. She taught me how to cook a few things and how to sew because she wanted me to get married to a beautiful woman because I loved her, not because I needed to survive. Mama taught me a lot of things. She taught me how, how to remember my lines, how to study my lines when I was in a play or in a musical, taught me a technique to be able to do that. She also taught me and my brother how to pray, taught us the Lord's Prayer. And then as we got older and went off to college and things like that, she would call us and say, are you still praying? Yes, Mama. Had a test this morning. I prayed this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mama even helped me to come to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But one of the greatest lessons that mama taught me was that you treat people like people because all people, yeah, are created in the image of God. So to despise one is to despise the Almighty. To have a bias or a prejudice against one is to have a bias or a prejudice against the Almighty. We treat people righteously because they've been created in the image of God. Lord, you know, the older I get, and the more foolishness that I see happening in the world today, the more I think that more folks should have talked to my mama. More people should have talked to mama. In Jesus' name, be blessed today. Amen. My friends, it is now time for us to give. And here at the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, we do this in two fashions. The first is to give your tithes and your, and your offerings. We give our tithes and offerings because the Lord has said we are to give our tithes and offerings. And of course, the collection plate will come by in just a few moments. But those of you who have given online or, or will give online, we thank you for that as well. And we give because the Lord has said so. Not because I stand before you or because somebody is nudging you. It's an act of Christian discipline, loyalty, and obedience. But the second act of giving is greater than the first, and that's to give yourself. 
So if you're here today and you walked in without Jesus Christ being in control of your life, this invitation is for you to begin to live your life fully to the glory of God with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Perhaps there's someone here today and you'd like to become a member of this church. Well, we'd be more than happy to have you as a member here of the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. Or maybe there's someone here today and you are a member of this church, or maybe you're a member of another church, but you've gotten off track. You're not living your life for the Lord like you know that you should, Well, this invitation is for you to begin again, to start over again. And there's no need to be embarrassed about that or ashamed about that. Many of us in this room have done it. The old church used to call it rededicating your life. Many of us online have done it. I've done it time and time again. It's a sign of how gracious our God is. Or perhaps special prayer is what you need. But in a few moments, the praise team is going to bless us in song again. And as they are singing, if you're here today and if any of these have touched you, I would invite you to come down, join me, come join John Walford, our service elder for this month, over here to the side. But if coming down is a little bit much for you, and for those of you who are with us online, then do me this favor. Reach out to me as soon as you can. Even though I will be attending a conference this week, I'm still checking some emails. The following week, I'll be back in the office, of course. But reach out to me, and let's talk. Let's find out where you are in your walk with Christ. For be it that day or today, we always want to make sure that it is the day that we get things right between you and the Lord. Amen? Amen. Thank you. 
Yes, yes, yes. My friends, as uh, we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, there are a few things that I would like for you to keep in your hearts and uh, in your minds on today. Of course, those who uh, suffered from the tornadoes in South Texas, please, please, please continue to pray for those families and those communities. The cyclone in Miramar and Bank Bangladesh. Please continue to pray for our sisters and brothers as they're dealing with um, horrific weather conditions in that part of the world. And then, uh, while I was in, in my study getting ready to come in here today, the Lord wants us to pray for those struggling with broken relationships. I think by now you know how this goes. <laughs> I don't know who's dealing with that. But the Lord does. And the Lord wants us to pray for those who are struggling with broken relationships right now. Please, join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Creator God, we thank you today for your blessings, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for our mamas today, oh Lord grateful for those who are still with us, thankful for those who have joined you in the church triumphant, O oh Lord. And we know that you know what a mother's love is like. We know that you know how important our mamas are to us. For even from the cross, you would make sure that your mother was provided for. Thank you, as always, Lord, for setting the right example before us. And we come to you right now asking your blessings upon your children who have lost loved ones, property, whose hopes and dreams are being extremely challenged right now because of the hurricanes that went through southern Texas. And then so many, O oh Lord, of our sisters and brothers who are dealing with Cyclone Mocha right now. We may not have names, but you do. We may not have addresses, but you do. 
And we trust you, Lord, to step in to deliver those who are trapped under debris, those workers who are doing their best to rescue and save lives. And the great aid that has been given and will be given from around the world to help our friends, our sisters, our brothers, your children suffering under this cyclone. And then, Lord, those who are challenged with broken relationships, we don't know what have, what, what caused it, how long the relationship has been in disarray. But again, we don't have to. We're praying to you. We know that you are a mender of broken hearts. A lifter of downed heads. A repairer of breaches. So step in, Lord and heal these broken relationships as only you can. We thank you for this church. Thank you for the ministries, the committees, the leadership, the membership, our guests, all who are connected here, oh Lord. And we pray for each and every one and each family. Bless this nation but not only the United States of America, every country in this world you've created. And bless all of our political leaders as only you can. Keep our women and men in uniform safe and those who are away from their families, keep their families comforted. And now, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. That my mama made sure that we knew how to pray. We say this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. not into temptation but deliver us from evil thine is the kingdom power glory forever amen amen my friends as we prepare to leave this place I know this is the second Sunday and this is usually the Sunday where many of our committees will be meeting but I don't know of committees that are meeting on today if I am wrong please the committee chair say something Missions meeting today? Okay. So missions will be meeting today uh, after um, the, the Sunday school class is going to take place after this worshiping experience in Shelton. In the same room? Okay. All right. So missions will be meeting uh, later on today. Other committees, make sure that you get your information to Fitz so that he can put together the session packet. Make sure those reports are in no later than 3 o'clock by next Sunday, preferably Thursday, that's when we're asking for it, is Thursday. But as I mentioned in the last session meeting, make sure you get them in definitely to all of us, if you will, by that deadline, okay? All right. I see, I don't think we've got anything else, so will you stand, please? So today is Mother's Day. So make sure you do something kind for your mama on today. All right. I'm not going to tell you to take her out to go get something to eat, but take her out to go get her something to eat. Okay. Now may the grace of God.
The love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule about in each of us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us on today. Thank you for joining us online.